good afternoon, morning, wherever it is, where you are. Um, I got asked a question about movers and factoring for movers and a fast way or the hand method to figure out how to shoot movers. And there is a long way, which I have a whiteboard here with all kinds of numbers on it. And I have numbers written right here on the notepad. Uh, but the thing you have to realize is like a bullet leaves. So this is going to be a fast way. I'm going to talk through the math behind it. Um, that's not something you can't figure out if you just understand how many inches are in a foot, how many feet are in a mile, how many feet are in a yard. Because you're basically just reducing everything to a common unit of measurement and then using that to determine um, your lead. So, and you need to understand how many um, inches at given distances are in MOA and then how many MOA are in a mill. So, uh, and then I'll explain why they're kind of close, close enough, and where they kind of fall apart. Anyway, so what you have to realize is, is as you, the moment a bullet leaves the muzzle, let's say for the sake of this explanation, I'm gonna use 77 grain at like 2650. Um, so out of a 5.56 five, gun, 77 grain leaves the muzzle at 2650. The problem is, is based on the BC and uh, the and the, ability, the bullet's ability to maintain its efficiency through the air, it will lose velocity through its path. And so it's not like it's 2650 at 300 yards, 500 yards, 7 yards, 100 yards. And people way smarter than myself can figure out the degrade of velocity over distance. But you can use 2650 and kind of treat it as a constant over the path to kind of figure out how the math works. Um, because figuring out decreased velocity um, over distance is something I'm going to leave to guys like Brian Litz. So uh, when we were at the schoolhouse, they taught us this way, um, or at least they explained it lightly. And and then you basically, because ballistic apps weren't really a thing, you know, 10 years ago, uh, 15 years ago, the uh, you kind of had to shoot it and you had guys walk at different dis distances and then you wrote down what your leads were. Um, and so I'll talk through this math. So I've got a big whiteboard here. Um, I'll post a picture of it behind this. So you guys can scroll back and forth. Um, stick with me. So basically you need to understand that a 2,650 feet per second is how fast I'm gonna use as a, as a baseline. With that being said, how many yards a second is 2,650 feet per second? So that gives you 883 yards. Um, that's going to become relevant here shortly. Lots of fucking numbers on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically make, um, we're going to say walking is between two and three miles an hour. Jogging is between five and seven and sprinting is between nine and 12. Um, plus or minus, you know, you come from different continents. Um, you really haven't ran in a while. Let's use that. Which we're going to translate that into feet per hour, which then we translate, um, I basically took and just added the, the two between nine and 12 and basically picked an average. So I use the average of all of these for the rest of this. Um, one mile equals 5,280 feet. Uh, one foot equals 12 inches. So walking, we basically end up with 13,200 feet per hour um, average, which then equals 220 feet per minute, which then equals 3.67 feet per second which then equals 44 inches per second. You do the same thing. So you take it down from feet per hour, feet per minute, feet per second, inches per second, and you end up with these numbers over here, which are 44, 105, and 184. That is how many inches per second somebody's moving um, when they're running at, basically when they're walking, jogging, or sprinting, right? So all I did was a lot of conversions um, from miles an hour, to, to feet to in inches to figure out at these speeds, which is kind of how fast we're moving at those, how many inches per second we're moving. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. So what we're gonna do then is then figure out flight time. Again, this is flight time factoring if you didn't take any decrease in velocity into account because there's just no way to do that without a ballistic gap. So decrease in velocity, well, all we're gonna do is take 300, the distances I wanted to use, which are 300, 500, 700. And we're coming all the way back 
to that number 883, which is 883 yards per second is how fast 2650 is, right? So that means if we take 300 yards and divide it by 883, it's gonna give us how many, uh, what the flight time is to for that bullet to move this many yards. So I ended up with 0 0.34, 0 0.57, and 0.79, um, or, or eight. Now, we're just gonna go over here. We're gonna take those inches per second that we, fit, we factored for um, the walk, jog, run, and we're basically going to then take the inches per second and multiply times the flight time. So one of these numbers times how, because that's inches per second, right? That's how many inches somebody's moving in one second. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna factor um, 0.34 times 44, which will then give us 14.96. So at 300 yards, somebody is moving 14.96 inches in the, dis, in the flight time that we factored, right? 500 yards is 25.1 and 700 yards is 34.76. And then I just did the same thing for jogging and running. Now, the actual time of flight um, based off decreased velocity is actually, instead of 0.34, it's 0.39. Instead of 0.57, it is actually uh, 0.73. And instead of 0.79, it's actually 1.15. So this is calculated from applied ballistics. I pulled it from the app of what the actual flight times with 2650 and a 77 grain would actually be. So uh, you end up with drastically different flight times based off of the uh, decrease in velocity um, over distance. So now we come back. And so I came up with inches um, that you're gonna have to hold in front of somebody. So basically all you're gonna do is take those inches, um, you're gonna divide it by the distance. So like for, if you wanna figure out how many MOA you need to hold, let's say for 500 yards, my walking lead is 25 inches. 25.1 divided by 500 or five would then give you like five point something, five point something divided by 3.43 would then give you mils and the walking uh, mill hold or the, uh, yeah, the walking mill hold at 500 is like 1.46. Um, so that's a really, really long way to get to based off no decrease in velocity. This is why ballistic apps um, work though. So compared to the, the actual lead pulled from applied, applied ballistics um, on this page here, I'm just gonna talk through it a little bit. For, for walking, we had 1.45, 1.46 and then 1.44 um, based off of maintained speed over distance, right? And so the actual leads are 1618 and two. So what that ends up being is, is I've got a difference of at 300 yards, I've got a difference of an inch. Doesn't really matter, right? So a 300 yard mover, I just did the long math and I'm within an inch of, I've got 15 inches right here and I've got 14 inches is the actual lead. And then we go to 500 yards and I've got 25 inches and the actual calculated lead is 32. Uh, at 700 yards, and now it opens up. Now it says at 700 yards, I need 35 inches. 34.76 is from my long math. And the actual lead per applied ballistics is actually 51. So you have 15 inches of difference in lead uh, based off of the distance the adding that much distance, right? So that shows how much more velocity um, is maintained in the beginning because the difference is significantly less, but obviously how much less velocity is maintained at distance. And then as you get into jogging and running, then it really fucking opens up. So we go from like uh, 300 yard is 3.5 and then the actual is 3.8. So again, we're plus or minus five inches. Um, at 500 yards, I have 3.5 and it's actually 4.3. We have a difference of 13 inches. Uh, and then at 700, we've got, th I factored 3.5 and it's factoring 4.8, um, which is 122 inches. And I've got 84 inches as my long math. And then we go into running, which then it opens up even more. And I've got, um, my factored is, uh, oh, I didn't factor for walking or the running. I didn't factor it. So anyways, you can see it opens up. A long way to say, um, you can use this for like a walking lead. You can use it for some other things, but there's a lot of numbers and some of you guys were like, and swipe. Um, but 
there's ways to factor it, factor it, but there's a, this magical thing called a ballistic app that we have access to and, um, and use it. I mean, time of flight is you can get rough. You're not going to be close. Um, obviously I looked at it, you know, you lose tenths of a second. And when considering how fast the bullets are moving, you're just not going to be as close. So, uh, use your ballistic app. They're all free. And they all give you this information. This is all, I pulled it all off from Applied Ballistics. Um, and then you can do whatever. If you guys want to go through the method of factoring long ways to get a starting lead, um, I would just maybe add a percentage uh, to uh, to calculate for decrease in velocity. Um, but it'll give you a starting point. Um, you're not, you're going to be, you're not going to have held enough just because you have to realize you're not maintaining the same velocity over hundreds and hundreds of yards so anyways hopefully i didn't bore the shit out of some of you um just was thinking about it and people were asking me how you factor that it's a, you can doing the math backwards based off maintained velocity isn't hard you just have to be able to do a lot of conversions um to get to what they actually are the leads actually are is a lot harder because you know, then BC and main maintenance of velocity and stuff comes into play. So I'm Joe with Bruiser Industries, and I'll catch you next time. If you guys have any questions, uh, hit me below or hit up Brian Litz. That guy's way smarter than I am. Um, and I'm going to tag him in this thing. Uh, I'll catch you next time.